Hello, I'm Dr. Rajiv Agarwal, Professor of Medicine at Indiana University School of Medicine and Staff Physician at the VA Medical Center in Indianapolis, Indiana, USA. I'm delighted to present you the results of a study published in Nephrology Dialysis Transplantation, and I'm honored that ERA EDTA has selected this work as the inaugural journal club article. The name of the publication is Effects of Canagliflozin versus Phenernone on Cardiorenal Outcomes, Exploratory Post Hoc Analysis from Fidelio DKD Compared to Reported Credence Results. The study was funded by Bayer, and here are my disclosures. Phenernone is a novel selective non-steroidal MRA that inhibits MR overactivation. In the Fidelio DKD population that had albuminuria, advanced CKD, and type 2 diabetes, as well as well-controlled blood pressure, hemoglobin A1c, and were treated with optimized RAS inhibitor therapy, it was demonstrated that phenernone reduced CKD progression by 18% and cardiovascular morbidity and mortality by 14%. The primary endpoint of this trial was CKD progression, whereas the cardiovascular morbidity and mortality was a key secondary endpoint. Both of these endpoints were pre-specified and the study was powered to evaluate each of these outcomes independently. The primary endpoint in the Fidelio DKD trial was kidney specific. The endpoint consisted of a composite of 40% decrease in EGFR, sustained reduction in EGFR 15 mLs per minute or less, end-stage kidney disease defined by long-term dialysis or kidney transplantation, or death from kidney failure. The hazard of the composite kidney outcome was reduced by 18%. We can calculate from the absolute risk reduction that over three years, 29 patients treated with phenernone would save one such kidney outcome. Two SGLT2 inhibitors, kidney outcome trials, Credence and DAPA-CKD, have also reported positive cardiorenal outcomes for patients with CKD and type 2 diabetes, and also among patients with CKD without type 2 diabetes in DAPA-CKD trial. In the Credence trial, the primary endpoint of which is shown here the relative risk of primary outcome was reduced by 30%. In the DAPA-CKD trial, the cardiorenal composite was reduced by 39%. At first glance, phenernone may be perceived to have a smaller benefit on kidney outcome compared with SGLT2 inhibitors, canagliflozin and dapagliflozin. For example, in the Fidelio DKD trial, the risk reduction is 18%, versus in the Credence trial, the risk reduction is 30%. The question is whether phenernone is inferior to canagliflozin in preventing cardiorenal outcomes in patients with albuminuria and type 2 diabetes. The objective of this analysis was to facilitate a more nuanced comparison of the treatment effect of phenernone with that of canagliflozin by adjusting for key differences in the trial design. These include three major differences, restricting the analysis to a subgroup of patients from Fidelio DKD who met the CKD inclusion criteria of Credence, using cardiorenal composite endpoints equivalent to that used in the Credence trial, and adjusting for differences in baseline heart failure incidence. We included the adjustment for heart failure incidence because prior studies have shown that heart failure in patients with CKD can affect cardiovascular outcomes and that these patients benefit from treatment with SGLT2 inhibitors or MRAs. We restricted our comparisons to Credence because similar comparisons cannot be made between Fidelio DKD and DAPA-CKD because DAPA-CKD included patients without diabetes, 
a group not included in the Fidelio DKD trial. And the primary endpoint in DAPA CKD was a 50% reduction in EGFR, which was not an adjudicated event in Fidelio DKD. I will now explain in greater detail some important differences between the study designs of the Fidelio DKD and Credence trial. First, the inclusion-exclusion criteria. In the Fidelio DKD trial, the entry criteria was EGFR between 25 to less than 75, versus in the Credence trial, it was between 30 and 90. Second, the urine albumin to creatinine ratio were between 30 and 5,000 milligram per gram creatinine in Fidelio DKD trial, compared with 300 to 5,000 milligram per gram creatinine in the Credence trial. Third, Fidelio DKD excluded patients with symptomatic heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, whereas Credence excluded patients with heart failure only if they were treated with an MRA. In Credence, for example, MRA was use was an exclusion criteria, although post-baseline use was permitted if deemed medically necessary. In the Fidelio DKD trial, potassium of more than 4.8 was an exclusion criteria, whereas in the Credence trial, patients with potassium more than 5.5 were excluded. There were also some key differences between the endpoint definition among the trials. The kidney-specific composite endpoint for Fidelio DKD was similar to Credence, except that in Fidelio, a sustained 40% decrease in EGFR was needed to qualify for this endpoint, unlike in Credence, where a sustained doubling of serum creatinine was required. This translates to a decrease of at least 50% in GFR from baseline. Furthermore, Credence had cardiovascular death as a component of its composite endpoint, whereas Fidelio DKD did not. A total of 4,619 out of 5,674 patients, approximately 81% in the Fidelio DKD trial, met the Credence-like criteria of having an USCR between 300 to 5,000 and EGFR between 30 and 75 at screening, and therefore were included in this analysis. The comparison of baseline demographics from the Fidelio DKD subgroup and Credence group found that they were broadly similar with regard to duration of diabetes, RAS inhibitor use, and the percentage of patients who were African American and Caucasian. However, there were some notable differences in the Fidelio DKD Credence like subgroup. They were slightly older, had a lower systolic blood pressure, and lower glycated hemoglobin. There were also fewer patients with a history of heart failure, and there were more frequent use of cardiovascular medications and a greater proportion of Asian patients. GLP-1 RAs were more frequently used in the Fidelio DKD study, approximately 7% versus 4% in the Credence trial. SGLT-2 inhibitors were used in about 5% of the patients compared to half the randomized population in Credence. The treatment with phenernone and placebo was balanced approximately 50-50, and the baseline characteristics between placebo and phenernone treatment were similar. The medium follow-up was 2.6 years. A total of 27.6% of the patients prematurely discontinued treatment in the study, and the number of discontinuations was similar between treatment arms. Of the 4,608 patients assessed, mean treatment adherence was high at 92%. Median UACR was similar between groups. However, EGFR was much lower in the Fidelio DKD trial at a mean of 46.5 compared to 56.2 in the Credence trial. This is because there were few patients with GFR more than 60 in the Fidelio DKD trial compared to the Credence trial. This is an important consideration because early SGLT2 inhibitor trials have demonstrated a diminishing effect on kidney protection with lower EGFR.
Examining the kidney's specific endpoint in Fidelio DKD, the relative risk reduction was 18% versus credence at 30%. However, when we matched the equivalent endpoints or the cardiorenal endpoint that credence used in the Fidelio analysis, a 22% relative risk reduction was seen. When we match equivalent CKD entry criteria, which is patients with a GFR between 25 and 75 and albuminuria more than 300 to 5,000, we have a relative risk reduction of 26%. However, note we cannot adjust for high GFR in the credence population because there were many patients in credence with an eGFR between 75 and 90 which obviously were excluded in the Fidelio DKD analysis by inclusion-exclusion criteria. When we match the incidence of heart failure in the two trials, we find that the relative risk reduction is 28%, which is quite close to 30% relative risk reduction seen in the Credence trial. The incidences of each of the components of the cardiorenal composite was lower with phenernone than placebo. Notably, the risk of ESKD was 28% lower with phenernone versus placebo. Overall, the relative risk of cardiorenal composite endpoint in the placebo groups of either trial, Fidelio DKD or Credence, was similar with event rates of 59.5 and 61.2 per 1,000 patient years, as were the incidences of EGFR less than 15 and ESKD. However, the incidence rate of sustained decline of more than 57% from baseline was larger in the placebo arm of the Fidelio DKD group than the credence population at 33.8 patients with events per 1,000 patient years. The CV death rate was lower with placebo in Fidelio DKD than in credence 18.6 versus 24.4 patients with events per 1,000 patient years. The time course of improvement in cardiorenal outcomes in Fidelio DKD compared to the credence show similar trajectories of improvement. In the Fidelio DKD credence-like subgroup, Phenernone reduced the risk of cardiorenal composite outcomes by 26% versus placebo. After adjusting for differences in baseline history of heart failure in the two trials, the adjusted hazard ratio showed an improvement of 28% relative to placebo in the Fidelio DKD trial. In summary, this analysis highlights the pitfalls of direct comparisons between trials. Subtle differences in the inclusion-exclusion criteria, especially heart failure, and outcome definitions lead to meaningful differences in outcomes. Notably, we cannot adjust for the higher GFR that was studied in the Credence study because we excluded patients with eGFR between 75 and 90 in the Fidelio DKD analysis. When key differences in trial design are accounted for, both Fidelio DKD and Credence demonstrate a cardiorenal benefit of a similar magnitude. In the Fidelio DKD, the relative risk reduction was 28%, and in the Credence trial, it was 30%. Thank you for your attention.